We are all stuck indoors and the trips to the local model shops and to the pubs have been somewhat limited in the fact that they've been stopped altogether. So among all the other projects I have been getting on with, I thought I would share a small project that will require nothing more from any shops by using a load of things I currently possess or can make up fairly easily. So without further ado, I'm going to have a go at upgrading the frankly ancient Triang and now Hornby Clerestries. These coaches are super basic, have been around forever and have been branded in almost every livery under the sun. They seem to be very loosely based on coaches of Great Western origin and bear significant resemblance to the Dean Clerestries, if you look past the missing compartment. So what actually am I going to be using? Well, I've got some plastic card, both strip and sheet in varying sizes, some brass rod, again varying sizes, tissue paper, paint, varying colours, varnish, chain, gluing glaze, metal wheels, brass bearings, guitar string, NEM couplings and pockets, wheel balancing weights and some generic scrap tubing. As I say, I have all these knocking about, so this should be a nice free project. So to start with, we're going to start in my favourite place, underneath the coach. Odd place, I know, but it's where I get my kicks. So what is there to do here? Everything. Remove all of it, get it gone, be gone with you, and then we'll remake it. So the tubing for the tanks underneath. We'll cut that to length that looks about right when comparing to photos of the prototype. I've struggled to find uh, any drawings of this particular prototype, so I'm just sort of going to wing it a little bit. Then using the plastic card strips, wrap that around to make it look like a bracket holding it. This is then glued into position and then repeated similarly with the vacuum cylinder. Again, cut to size from the piece of tube and then a piece of plastic card strip underneath it and some brass rods up the side to make the bracket. This is then glued into place underneath the chassis. A simple V hanger assembly is then crafted from the brass rod and soldered together. The brake rigging is also made up in a similar fashion with brass rod all soldered together. Lastly, the underframe reinforcements. It's a little bit quirky almost as it's pretty small in comparison to that found on other coaches. This is just made up again out of brass rod and soldered together and glued into place on the underframe. For the next step concerning the underframe, I took the chance to install metal wheels and brass bearings. As the brass bearings take up a little bit more room, I had to drill very carefully right, into the existing axle boxes so that the bearings can fit without causing too much pressure on the axle, as I actually want these coaches to be free running. So these were drilled out and the new bearings carefully super glued into position. Once the glue was dry, I slotted in the new axles and wheels. Whilst on the bogies, I removed the old massive tension lock coupling and I'm installing an NEM coupling. This should improve the looks dramatically, although I'm not fully sure at this stage if it'll properly work or whether it'll just derail the coach. But we'll, we'll give it a go and if not, I've ruined this bogey. Now the next bit will change the outward appearance of the coach a fair bit. These are the step boards. I'm assuming the name a little bit here, so please correct me in the comments if you know otherwise. These ran the entire length of the vehicle, although the board splits at the bogies. The boards over the bogies are held in by something. Looking at the pictures that I have, I can't actually see what's holding them on, so I'm assuming there's some brackets holding it directly onto the bogies. So that's what I've done. Glued straight onto the bogey, and then the middle section has three brass rod brackets made up and glued into some holes I drilled. I did that all around the coach and that was the underframe dealt with. Next, we're moving to the ends of the coaches. I took this photo at Didcot when I was there a while ago and it shows this conduit and rodding. So I'm attempting to make that out of brass rod and plastic card. We also have the vacuum hoses. These are being made partially from brass rod and partially from guitar string. Also at this time, 
these two chains are also being glued into position. Annoyingly, I don't have any spare three link couplings kicking about at the moment, so I can't install a hook. So no hook will have to do for now. Lastly, I took the chance to fill the hole where the roof clips in, as I'll just glue the roof in place at the end, just to, fit, just to improve the look of the ends. Next, I'm going inside the coach, putting in the compartment bulkheads. This is just a case of using some plastic card, cut and filed to shape, and then glued into position. I'm going to replace the weight with some wheel balancing weights, as they weigh a little bit more and can be distributed throughout the full length of the coach, with one 10 gram weight in each compartment. I then made some seats. I have a load of these willed sheets left over from when I made the platforms and I found that one row of these stones will make good sized seat backs. So I cut them into strips and then into size and then into the coach they were glued. However, just regular plastic card will still suffice for this. It's just I was using what I had. The interior was then painted in adequate colors, light brown for the bulkheads, red for the seats and a bluey gray for the floor. I do have a reference photo for the interior However, I couldn't replicate them with what I had, so I did something completely different. Now, the next part is something that I found a little bit off-putting, and it is something that is understandably terrifying. Painting. However, this shouldn't be too scary, for these coaches anyway. As the moulds for these models are from the 60s, they're not particularly fine, meaning that the recess for the panelling is actually pretty big. So it's pretty easy to paint. So working through logically, starting with the lightest colour first, I painted away. It's a little bit time consuming, I'll give you that. But just take your time and just make sure you have some tissue and white spirit to one side after you've done the first light coats. So that if you get any black or brown on the cream, it can easily be removed and not cause any problems. The roof was painted white and the underframe was all painted black. Once that's all painted, a quick coat of varnish. For me, I use some gloss varnish, which is actually quite a rare outing for the gloss varnish. Now the windows. I took some tissue paper and glued that behind the windows in the roof, as these were just frosted glass in real life. And then for the main windows, I took some glue and glaze and glazed the windows. Before putting it all back together, I installed some passengers so to look like these coaches are actually doing something and then it was all put back together with the roof glued in place. And there we have it, a revamped coach that didn't cost me a penny. However, if it wasn't quarantine and I want to spend a bit more money, what would I spend it on slash do differently? I would get some replacement buffers, some coupling hooks, and on the underframe, get some white metal uh, vacuum tank and reservoirs. But that's all for another day. I may also look into some more accurate bogeys but that would be really pushing the budget just a little bit too far. Well, thank you for watching, you cool cats and kittens. Click the like button and subscribe if you're feeling particularly exotic today. <laughs>